All right, today we're gonna go over 6.4, which is all about the dot product. So we can take the dot product of two vectors. It's written as this, u dot v. So you're not multiplying, but it's the dot product. So we would multiply the first number and the first number in each of our vectors and add that to the multiplication of the second number times the second number. So when you take the dot product of two vectors, you end up getting one number. We have some properties of the dot product below here. So taking the dot product of u and v is the same thing as v and u. It doesn't matter the order. Just keep an eye out for these two cases down here. So you always just want to stick with doing the parentheses first, like for number five. Even though we're multiplying it by some number c, it doesn't get distributed inside of the parentheses. It only gets multiplied to one number. So just to be safe, always stick with doing the parentheses first and then just do whatever it tells you after that. All right, so let's find the dot product. Again, the dot product is the sum of the first number times the first number plus the second number times the second. So for a, we have the first number times the first number, 4 times 2 would be 8, plus the second number times the second number, 15. 8 plus 15 would be 23. So the dot product of these two vectors would be 23. Next, for b, first number times the first number, 2 times 1 is 2, plus negative 1 times 2 would be negative 2. 2 plus negative 2 would just be 2 minus 2, which is 0. And then C, first number times first number, 0 times 4 is 0, plus 3 times negative 2, so negative 6. This gives us negative 6. All right, so we have a couple more examples here. So we have to find the dot product of u and v and then multiply that by vector w. So first, let's find our dot product here. So this one's u, this one's v. So we take the first number times the first number. Negative 1 times 2 would be negative 2. Plus the second number times second number, negative 12. Negative 2 plus negative 12 is negative 14. Now we take negative 14 and multiply it to vector w. So 1, negative 2. So here we can just distribute the 14 to our vector w. So negative 14 times 1 would be negative 14. And negative 14 times 2 would be 28. So this is our answer for a. Next, we have to find the dot product of u and 2v. So first we want to find what 2v is and then take the dot product with u. So u is 1, 3, 2v would be 2, negative 4. So we distribute the 2 to everything in vector v. So this Sorry, that's my dog. So this would be 2 times 2, which is 4. 2 times negative 4 would be negative 8. Now we take the dot product of these two. So first times the first. This gives us negative 4 plus the second times the second, which would be negative 24. Negative 4 plus negative 24 would be negative 28. All right, and lastly, C says that we have to find the magnitude of u. So to find the magnitude of a vector, we just take the first number squared plus the second number squared and the square root of that. So our formula would be the square root. Of, we're looking at vector u, so negative 1 
squared plus 3 squared. Negative 1 squared would just be 1, plus 3 squared would be 9. And then 1 plus 9 is 10. We would simplify this if we can, but our two factors of 10 are 2 and 5, so can't simplify it. All right, next we're going to learn how to find the angle between two vectors. So we're finding angle theta here, and we're going to use the dot product to help us find that angle. Our formula is on the next slide. So this is the formula we're going to use to find the angle between two vectors. So we have the cosine of theta is equal to the dot product of u and v over the magnitude of u times the magnitude of d. So nothing too, too, too difficult here. Just have to find what this is, this is, and this is, put them all together in the formula. All right, so let's do it for example three. So our formula again is cosine of theta is equal to the dot product of u times v over the magnitude of u times the magnitude of v. So let's find our dot product first. We take the first times the first times plus the second times the second. So 4 times 3 would be 12 plus 3 times 5, which is 15. So that's going to go on top. So cosine of theta is equal to 12 plus 15 is 27. Next, let's find our magnitude of u. We take the square root of the first squared plus the second squared. So 4 squared plus 3 squared. This is 16 plus 9. 16 plus 9 is 25. And the square root of 25 is 5. And then next, we have to find the magnitude of v. So we have the square root of 3 squared plus 5 squared. 3 squared is 9, plus 5 squared is 25. 9 plus 25 is 34. So the square root of 34 is our magnitude of V. Now we don't have to worry about simplifying the square root of 34 or even rationalizing this because we're going to put this into our calculator. If we have the cosine of theta is equal to whatever number this is, to find what theta is, remember we take the inverse of cosine, so we do cosine, that little negative 1, of 27 over 5 times square root 34. So we just put this into our calculator. So for this, just make sure your calculator is still in degrees, just like it should have been for the last few sections. And when you put this on your calculator, we should get 22.17 degrees. All right, so the next thing we're going to do is determine if two vectors are orthogonal. So two vectors are orthogonal when you take the dot product and it's equal to zero. So if we took the dot product between u and v and we got zero, these two vectors are orthogonal. Orthogonal and perpendicular are the same thing. We just say orthogonal because we're dealing with vectors and not lines here. But orthogonal and perpendicular both mean that they meet at right angles. And then the notes also add that the zero vector is orthogonal to every vector, just because if you multiply zero, or take the dot product of zero, and any vector, you would get zero. So that just means that it's orthogonal. So we have to determine if the vectors are orthogonal. So remember, we take the dot product and we get zero. That means that they are orthogonal. So let's take the dot product of u and v. So we multiply the first and the first. So we get 2 times 6, which is 12, plus the second times the second. Negative 3 times 4 would be negative 12. 12 minus 12 gives us 0. 
So yes, they are orthogonal. So make sure you actually show your work for these. I know like you could probably just do it in your head. Not much work is required, but I want to see that you understand that when you take the dot product and you get zero, that means that they're orthogonal. So when you're actually working out the homework, this math isn't too much to do in your head, but I want to see your work. This slide just restates what we did on the last two. So two vectors that are perpendicular are, are vectors that meet at a right angle are orthogonal. Two vectors are orthogonal if and only if the result of their dot product is equal to zero. Same thing we just did. So this is a little bit different here. We have the opposite of orthogonal, which are parallel. Two vectors are parallel if and only if they are proportional to each other. So if we have vector u and it's the same thing as some constant times v, that means that they are parallel or if they are proportional. So u1 over v1 is equal to u2 over v2. So that they have the same proportions. So determine if u and v are parallel, orthogonal, or neither. So it gives us the vectors as a linear combination. So we could just rewrite it in vector form, in component form. So this is 2, negative 2, and vector v is negative 1, negative 1. So we could take the dot product to see if they are orthogonal. We could set them up as a proportion and see if they're parallel. We kind of got to do both because if they're not one, it could be the other or it could be neither. So let's figure out if they're parallel first. So we would take u1, u1 over v1 and set that equal to u2 over v2. So we can simplify the right side, or we can simplify both sides. So this would just give us negative 2 on the left, and then this would give us positive 2. So since these are not equal, they're not proportional, they are not parallel. So not parallel. Let's see if they are orthogonal. So we have to take the dot product and get it equal to 0. So multiply the first and the first. 2 times negative 1 would be negative 2. And multiply the second times the second. 2 times negative 2 times negative 1 is positive 2. Negative 2 plus positive 2 is 0. So that means that they are orthogonal. And that's it for the notes. I want you guys to turn in the completed notes to Canvas. I'll give you guys until tomorrow to do it, so it'll be like your homework, but definitely the video wasn't too long, so you should be able to turn it in by the end of class, but I'll give you guys all afternoon to get that done too. And then there's a web assign for 6.4 as well. So just make sure you show your work for the web assign. And when you turn in your homework for web assign, include that box with your name and your score. Don't forget. I'll see you guys on Tuesday.